Hi, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. Have you ever needed to create drop down lists where the items in one list are dependent on the items selected from another? If so, stay tuned and I'll show you how to do it. The term dependent drop down list refers to a situation where you have two lists and the values that are displayed in list number two are dependent upon the value selected in list number one. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can download a copy of this file via a link in the description below. Excellent Ice Creams, a small company that makes and sells different flavours of ice cream, have recently opened up an ice cream cafe. The cafe has 21 tables with various capacities. A customer walks in with two friends and asks for a table for three people. So I click the drop down arrow against the select a capacity and choose three people. And then I click the drop down arrow against select a table. And it only shows me the tables that have a capacity of three people. Another common scenario is where you have multiple rows and you have the dependent drop downs on each row. In this video, I'll show you how to create the drop downs for both scenarios. There's actually several ways that you can create dependent drop downs, and the method that I'm going to show you uses the XLOOKUP function. Now, not all versions of Excel include XLOOKUP. To check whether yours does, find a blank cell and type equals X. And if XLOOKUP is displayed in the list, then you're good to go. Let's start with a single set of drop downs. First of all, I need to set up the source for the drop down choices, and I've done that already. I've typed the items that I want to appear in the first drop down, select a capacity, across row three, and underneath each of those items are the items to appear in the second drop down. So, for example, when two people is selected from the first drop down, the second drop down should display tables 8, 9, 11, 14, and 15. To create the first drop down, select I3, that's where the drop down is going to go, and click on the data menu and the data validation button. Set allow to list and in the source box, either type A3 to F3 or highlight over A3 to F3. Those are the cells that contain the items that I want to have in the drop down. So click on OK. And now when I click the drop down, I get my list. I'm going to just select two people. To create the second drop down, this is where XLOOKUP comes in. The XLOOKUP formula will actually be used in the data validation dialog box. So I go to data, data validation, set allow to list, and in the source box, type in the actual formula, which in this example is equals XLOOKUP, open brackets, I3, because that's the cell that contains the item that I'm looking for, comma, A3 to F3, because that's the range where it will find the item that's in I3, comma, and then A4 to F8. Close brackets and click OK. So when I click the drop down now, I get a list of all the tables that have a capacity of two people. If I change this drop down to four people, I now get a list of all the tables that have a capacity of four people and so on. OK, so that's an example of where there is only two drop downs. But what if we have multiple drop downs on multiple rows? This is a booking sheet for the excellent ice cream company. Column B and column C both need drop downs and column C's drop downs will be dependent on column B. So if I click onto B4 and set up the drop down through data validation, the source is going to be F1 to K1 because that's the range of cells that contains the number of people. Once I've set up the data validation in one cell, I'm going to click on copy and select the other cells in that column. But then don't just click paste, click the arrow underneath paste, select paste special and select validation. 
and that will copy the data validation settings from B4 into those other selected cells. And just to test it works, we can just click on a couple of the cells. There we go. To create the drop down for column C, again, we use XLOOKUP. So go to data, data validation, select list, and in the source, put equals X lookup, open brackets. Now, if I click on B4, because that's the cell that will contain the number of people for this row, it puts the dollar signs around the B4 in the formula. I need to take those dollar signs out. If I don't, when I copy the data validation down to the other cells in column C, all the other formulas will reference B4, and we want them to reference B5, B6, B7, and so on. So just delete the dollar signs so that that cell is no longer fixed. Then put the comma in. The second parameter is F1 to K1. And the third parameter, just like in the other example, is the cells with all the tables in. Now, those cells must remain fixed with the dollar signs there, because otherwise, when I copy the data validation down, it will change the references. So instead of being F1 to K1, it'll be F2 to K2, F3 to K3, and so on as we copy down. And F2 to K6 will become F3 to K7, F4 to K8, and so on as we copy down. So we need to make sure that we are using the dollar signs or not using the dollar signs appropriately. Then close the brackets and click on OK. The reason that we get this error is because I have nothing in B4. So I'll say, yes, I want to continue. And then if I make a selection from the drop down in B4, I can then make a selection from the drop down in C4. And it only shows me the appropriate values. I then need to copy the data validation down column C. So I'll click copy. Select C4 to C8, click the arrow under Paste, select Paste Special, choose Data Validation, and click OK. So now if I select uh, another value from this drop down, say six people, I should get only those tables that have six people capacity. So there we have a couple of ways to create dependent drop down lists. I appreciate that there are other approaches to solving this problem. If you have any questions or you found an alternative way of doing it, let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please give it a like, share it with your colleagues and your friends. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. But until the next time, have an excellent day.